Shalom, 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 shalom. First, we're going to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakar Kodash, the double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and in spirit and in sincerity. And salutations to all the righteous Hebrew Israelite brothers out there that are teaching this word on the highways and byways and highways and hedges in the name of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakar Kodash. Shall I want to the hopeful elect men and women of Israel? Shall I want, shall I want, shall I want? As today's edification is called, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon that great river, the Euphrates. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon that great river, the Euphrates. So, as you know, part of the prophecies in the scriptures to do with the Lord's coming, to do with the, the ushering in of the war of Armageddon, the nations going to war, is to do with the great river Euphrates, how it's going to dry up of water, it's going to run out of resources, that there's not going to be any more water in the, in the Euphrates River to feed the populations that it runs through. So you may or may not know, this is the, this is the Euphrates here. It begins in Turkey, it makes its way all the way down through Syria, Iraq, into the Persian Gulf. Next to it is the Tigris River. That goes all the way through Turkey, Syria, Iraq, into the Persian Gulf. Now, the Great War of Armageddon, the war that is spoken of in the book of Joel chapter 3, Joel chapter 2, is going to take place here in the Levant, in the Middle East. This is where the war is going to take place, in the Levant. And one of the prophecies is to do with the river Euphrates is going to dry up. It speaks about the great river Euphrates drying up. So, without further ado, let's, where do I want to go to? Let's, let's just share this screen here. We're going to play you a short, actually I thought I was showing you this, I was speaking and I wasn't showing you. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> I was speaking about this map here, but I didn't actually have it on the screen. So let's go to the video and we're going to come back to the map. Let's go to the news article and then we're going to come back to this map because I was speaking on it, but I didn't actually have it on the screen. So lucky. So. What comes to your mind when I mention West Asia? Conflict, regional rivalries maybe? Today we are focusing on another issue that is plaguing West Asia and that's climate change. Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. Israel and Jordan have been engaging in drought diplomacy over scarce water resources, while Kuwait is converting the world's largest tire dump into a city. The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria for thousands of years. But now it has sunk to a historic low, sparking the region's worst water crisis in years. Our next report tells you more. The mighty Euphrates River used to near Aled al Hamis's farm. But now the river is only visible from a distance. The crops have been destroyed due to the lack of irrigation. Even worse, the farmer's family has been left without drinking water. 
بشار نہیں یب سے بسیتین نہیں یب سے We are completely deprived of drinking water. The women have to walk seven kilometers just to get a bucket of water for their children to drink. Al Hamid is among millions of Syrians who depend on West Asia's longest river, Euphrates. Water levels in the river have hit record lows. Neighboring Iraq has also been affected. Both Iraq and Syria have been dry countries. Despite this, The current drought is unprecedented. Rainfall has declined by 70%. Environmentalists are calling it the region's worst water crisis in years. 12 million uh, people in Syria and Iraq are struggling with this, uh, the worst uh, water crisis in years that we have seen. So um, especially this is, you know, the, the water table is at its lowest, 70% less rainfall. And this has really wide ramifications for, uh, for health. Um, it has wide ramifications because drinking water isn't safe. The issue is not limited to drinking water shortage. Critical facilities like hospitals are at risk of facing power outages. This, as the drought is threatening to bring hydroelectric power plants to a halt. Power shortages affect people's lives and forces them to use fuel oil. In addition, in the summer when it's hot, people need more electricity. With pumping stations and power generation stations out of service, hundreds of thousands of hectares of agricultural lands are affected. as well as the vegetable, maize and cotton seasons. And activists warn that the situation is likely to worsen due to a lack of water resource management in the war-torn countries. Bureau report, we on Wild is One. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move. Kamar has had to flee her home twice due to conflict in Somalia. She has lost so much, including her seven-year-old son who died. So, as you can see, the great river Euphrates is drying up. Water. The women have to walk seven kilometers just to get a bucket of water. All right. Great River Euphrates is drying up. Now, let's pull out some scriptures here. Let's see what the Bible says about this. Because these are more signs that we're getting very close to the coming of our Savior, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Couldn't get to that mouse button quick enough. Let's get there. Let's pull out some scriptures here. So, Revelations. Revelations. We're going to start there. Revelation 16. So, da, da, da. verse 12. So Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So where is the way of the king of the east? The great river. So we've just seen the article. And remember, this... This, where is it? Sorry. This news report was just a couple of months ago, September the 6th, 2021. Okay. Just a couple of months ago, this news report came to light. And there was a more recent one just last month, I believe. There was a more recent report. So last month. There was a more recent one. Let's think of, let's see it. Hold on, let me see if I can get it. There was an actual more recent report just last month about this as well. 
So, let's get this up here. This is what the scripture says. This is going to be one of the signs when the Lord is going to let the six angels going to pour at his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof shall be dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So who are the kings of the east? These are the kings of the east here. The Iranians, the Iraqis, the Syrians, Turkey. These are the kings of the east here. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, we've got down here Bahrain, Jordan, so that the way for the kings of the east shall be prepared. So what we see taking place here to do with What we see taking place to do with the great river Euphrates drying up is biblical prophecy. It's biblical prophecy what we see taking place. Now let's go to let's put another precept here. As you can see, this is the Euphrates here, and that's the Tigris next to it. Now, if we go to Revelations, again, chapter 9 speaks about this as well. Revelations chapter 9. Verse. Right, Revelations chapter 9, verse 12 speaks about this war that's coming, this war of Armageddon, this World War III, and how the great river Euphrates is going to play a part in the signs that's going to be revealed to us before we go into this war. One of the things that's gonna, has to take place, just like the mark of the beast, the microchip has to be in play before we go to this World War Three, all right? Before we go into the War of Armageddon. These are the signs. The Lord said, look out for the signs and the seeds. It's like, hey, you know, when it's summer, the, you know, the, it's the, war, the weather is warm, you know, it's summer. When it's spring, the flowers start blossoming. When it's autumn, the leaves start dropping from the tree. And when it's winter, the temperature drops and it's freezing cold out there. You know, you look out for the signs, right? Everything dries up. So we do the same thing when it comes to the scriptures. The scriptures talks about the signs, the things that we must look out for to let us know what's coming, how much closer are we to it. So we are seeing the great river Euphrates dry up in our time, in our lifetime. This war is coming in our lifetime. It's not coming in our grandkids' lifetime or our children's life. It's coming in our lifetime, right? It's, this, is, this is something that's going to happen very soon. But these signs must come to pass before we get there. As I say, the great river Euphrates dried up is one of the signs because the angel is going to release his vial on the great river Euphrates for it to start drying up to show us one of the signs. So the scripture says, one woe is past which is World War I, and behold, there comes two woes more after, World War II, World War III. One woe is past, behold, there comes two more woes thereafter, World War I and World War II, World War III. This is what these three woes are speaking of. Right? For those of you that don't know or may not know this is what it's about. Now, it tells us the same thing. Is it uh, eight, 14. It tells us the same thing in, we've got another tab here. I just wanna go straight to the point, you see? We're not gonna dally dally today. The same thing, 
in Revelations 8, right? I just want to get the preset for that. Here it is. Revelations 8, verse 13. And I beheld, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe. Right? Which is symbolic for World War Three. Woe, woe, woe. World War One, World War Two, World War Three. Woe, woe, woe. World War Three. To the inhabitants of the earth, by the reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So, let's go back to, let's just put these tabs together. Go back to Revelations 9. So, one woe is past, and behold, there comes two more woes after it. So, we've established that this is talking about World War Three. Now, the word woe, just so you can see, Revelations 9 and 12. The word woe means destruction, right? The Hebrew. Strong. This is the Greek. Sorry. Thirty-seven fifty-nine. Uai. 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 Right. Alas, woe. Right. Alas, woe. That's why. That's why it speaks about that in Isaiah. It says, alas, alas, that day has come. So. Let's go back to, let's, see, let's go to here. Uh, so here. Okay, it's 13. Okay, so let's go back here. So one woe is passed, behold, there comes two more woes thereafter. Let's go to the next verse. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before the most high. So the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altars, which is before the most high. So that's the same sixth angel. That speaks of here in Revelations 16 and 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, at that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared. Same sixth angel here. Verse 14. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels. Right? He's got a major part to play. Lose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So, who are those four angels? Because the sixth angel is going to poise vial on the river Euphrates for it to dry up, which is what we are seeing happening in our lifetime. This is happening. So now it says the sixth angel now, which had the trumpet, saying to the sixth angel with the which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So which are the four angels? What four angels is it speaking of? Let's go there. Let's get another tab. I'm going to keep tabbing this up. Let's go there. Revelations again. Revelations chapter 7. These are the four angels here. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So what is the four winds that these angels are holding back? It's the nuclear war. It's the nuclear destruction. So these four angels, we just read here, it's next to each other. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, which is what we're seeing. Uh, let's get this here. Saying, Revelations 19 and 9 and 14 now, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So these four angels are bound in the great river Euphrates. They're holding back. What are they holding back? They're holding back 
And after these things, I saw the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, which is the nuclear war, the war of Armageddon, the nuclear destruction itself. The four winds represents the destruction, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That's the wind. That's, it's not talking about the actual wind that you feel on your face every day when you go outside and it's a breezy day or a nice warm, breezy wind or a heavy, gusty wind or a hurricane. This is talking about the destruction. This is the wind that comes from the destruction of a nuclear bomb. This is what they're holding back. Because this is all going to take place here. This is where the first nukes are going to be fired. In this place here. The river Euphrates is going to dry up. The kings, the scripture says, once the river Euphrates has dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Those are these, these are the kings here. Coming from the east, the Iranians, the Turks, the Syrians, the Iraqis, the Saudis, the Bahrainians, the Kuwaitis. These are the kings of the east, all the way back to China. China's far east. China is going to be part of the kings of the east. These are the kings of the east that are going to be coming into this place. Into the valley of Jehoshaphat to fight this war. So the four angels that are placed in the Levant. Or the Fertile Crescent. Or the Middle East. Whatever you want to call it. They're holding back the wind. Which is the destruction. Which is the war. But this is where the first nukes are going to be fired. Once all of the armies are gathered together. Remember the scripture tells us right. In Joel. I'll tell you boy. It's, it's beautiful to see this all unfolding. Joel chapter 3. Verse 2. The scripture tells us. The Lord says I will gather all the nations. And bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. This is the valley of Jehoshaphat. Here. The river Euphrates is drying up. They, they talk about the next war, some of these next wars are going to be starting over water, the supply of water, which we're going to see. Hmm? Because I think you can do without food, let's say food for 14 days, but you can do that water for only three or four days. I believe that's what they say. So this is where it's all getting ready. This is the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Everything's, everything, everything's getting put in place. I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people, the children of Israel, and for my heritage, Israel, African Americans, West Indians, and Caribbeans, Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Native American Indian tribes of North South America and Canada, those that descend from the transatlantic slave trade. That's that's the Lord's people, that's his heritage, that's Israel whom they have scattered amongst the nations and parted my land. As we all know, the land of Israel is parted between who? It's parted between the Palestinians and the Israelis, between the Ishmael and Esau have parted the land. So everything's in place. We're just waiting for that trigger. But everything's in place. So, kings of the east. The river of Freitas has been dried up. All of the nations have been gathered to where? To the valley of Jehoshaphat. As we know, it means Yahweh that. It means Yahweh's judgment. All right? We was looking at... Where was we? Oh, got back to you. All right? So, let's go. That scripture I want to get. Is it? Hold on. There's another scripture. That comes into play here. Oh, everything is being, everything is getting ready. Believe me when I tell you, we're just waiting for, like I said, the microchip has to go global. The mark of the beast. Uh, yeah. Back to you. Someone from the is trying to call me, they have to wait. They were doing the work. Hold on. Is 
Let's see if I can quickly find it. Hold on. No scripture that comes to play. Jeremiah, so let's see if I can quickly find it. One second, family. Jeremiah, yeah, I think I've got it. All right, hold on. Let's bring it up on the screen. So, we know the four winds represents the four angels holding back the four corners of the earth. For the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the tree. Until what? Until. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Coming from the east, you know. Remember, that's where the kings are going to be coming from, the east. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have what? Till we have sealed the service of the Most High in their foreheads. That's what we call the thawah. All right? That's the, the mark. That, that seal there is, 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 is the mark of salvation. That's what we call in Ezekiel. Whoops. Not Ezekiel. Got Ezekiel in my mind. It is Ezekiel, sorry. <laughs> in Ezekiel chapter 9. This is, this is what it's talking about. It's this seal here, Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, a tawak, upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that have been done in the midst thereof. That's what we do. We sigh and cry every day for all the abominations that are going on around the world, in the midst of us, amongst us, where we live, in the countries that we are, and everywhere else around the world. So if we go to, if we say Ezekiel 9 and 4 here, just so you can see. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And set a mark. Yeah, this is it here in the Hebrew. Strong's here, age 8420. Tav. Tav. And as you can see, desire a mark, see? Mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. That's the elect, right? They have to be sealed. And we believe, we believe in the spirit that they are sealed, the elect. We don't know who they are. We call ourselves the hopeful elect, but we believe that they are sealed. So this is another part of the revelations of, of the prophecies, is that the elect have to be sealed as well before that's why the scripture says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power, the most high, in their foreheads. And that seal is this mark here. It's a sign of exemption from judgment, the Torah. That's what this is, all right? So, all of these things have to come into play. And everything's coming together. This puzzle's coming together so beautifully. This is what I love about this. Now, the last part I want to go to is the last part but one from one of the last two parts is jeremiah just to show you jeremiah 50 and i spoke about this on the weekend that's a particular verse i want to go to here jeremiah 50 verse 9 for lo I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, which is America, all right, as we all know, an assembly of great nations, right? The assembly of great nations. So remember, the kings are coming from the east, all right? It's going to make up part of that assembly of the great nations. When it says, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. That they're going to be part of that assembly of great nations. So let's see. So it says, for I will raise up and cause it to come up against Babylon, America, right, and their allies, an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her, against America, and her allies. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as a mighty expert man, man and none shall return in vain. So where is that north country? 
an assembly of great nations from the North Country. Because remember, well, let's show you. So this is that North Country, Russia. It's north of the Levant. This is the North Country, an assembly of great nations that's going to be with him. Iran, Turkey, Iraq, Syria, the kings of the East are going to be on the side of the Russians. China will be on their sides. Libya, Ethiopia, tells you in the book of Ezekiel, right? All of those nations that may go and go going to gather together. But this is the North country. This is north of the Levant. Saudi Arabia, go right down there south, right? The further down you go, Yemen, Omen, that's south. This is north of the Levant. Russia is north of of the Levant, or what you want to call it, the Mediterranean, Middle East, the Fertile Crescent. This is the North country that's going to come with the Assembly of Nations, Gog and Magog, to come against America, Israel, and its NATO allies in this war of Armageddon that's going to start here in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. All significant what we see going on right now. So, the Lord said, raise up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, right? And they shall set themselves in array against her. From then she shall be taken. Their arrows, which are their nuclear missiles, shall be as a mighty expert man, and none shall return in vain. That's the wind when we was in Revelation 7. That's the wind that they're holding back, these four angels, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of the Most High in their foreheads. So this is the wind. We go back a verse. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seed of the living power, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. What is going to hurt the earth and the sea with? Not the normal wind. What it says here in verse 1. And after these things, I saw the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind, which is the nuclear destruction, should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So we're going to go to one more here. So that mark is the Torah, the tub, right, which is the mark of exemption from the destruction. So... One more here. We're not going to spend too long on this. Jeremiah 51. This is beautiful because this just finishes out absolutely beautiful. I think 60, I want to go to the way down here. Right. We're going to read a few verses. Jeremiah 51, verse 61. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, which is his scribe, When thou comest to Babylon and shall see and shall read all these words, all these words that Jeremiah read, Right about the destruction of Babylon the Great, about the war of Armageddon in Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51 and in Jeremiah 49. Then shalt thou say, O Lord, Yahweh, thou hast spoken against this place, the United States of America, to cut it off, that none shall remain in it. So we know it's not talking about ancient Babylon, which is Iraq, because it's populated by at least 25, 30 million people today. You've got Iraqis trying to cross the, the, the English Channel to come to England. You've got Iraqis out there on the um, on the, on, on the um, Belarusian border trying to get into Poland. We've all seen it. The, Im the immigrants trying to leave Iraq, get on the, Bel they're on the Belarusian border, trying to cross over into Poland. They're out there in France trying to cross the English Channel to come to England. Iraq is populated today. The Americans just left there after the war against Saddam. So we know it's not talking about ancient Iraq, ancient Babylon. But this is ancient Babylon. Today, what they call Iraq. So let's go back. Oops. So it says, Then shalt thou say, O Lord Yahweh, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate. You hear that? Forever. If you didn't get it before, right, and if you're not getting it today, uh, there's no help for you. But like I said, those of you of the elect, I can only believe that you understand. You, you, you've been edified in this word for so long that you can only understand what we're talking about. This is just routine for you. 
but that it shall be desolate forever. That's Babylon today, America. This is what's going to happen to it. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt what? bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. How symbolic is that? That the Lord told Jeremiah to cast it into the Euphrates. Because the Euphrates is going to play a major part in the signs that we're going to see, in the things that's going to happen, where the angels are, in ushering World War Three. So he said, bind it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. Yeah. How symbolic is that? And thou shall say, thus shall Babylon sink. So people want to see it say America. It's not going to say America, but it's talking about America. This is symbolic for America. Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise up from the evil that I will bring upon it. What's the evil? The intercontinental ballistic missiles, the war of Armageddon. Shall not rise up from the evil that the Mosai is going to bring upon earth. And they shall be weary. They're going to be weary in America and around the world when they see it destroyed. Revelation 18 tells you, thus far are the words of Jeremiah. <laughs> Simple as that. So I just really want to kind of bring that out today, boy. It wasn't going to be too long today. I always say that, but, you know, the lesson takes wherever it takes you. But thus shall Babylon sink. That's shall America's going to sink and shall not rise up from the evil. That evil is this nuclear destruction that's coming for America. That the, the country from the north it shall not rise up from the evil that the Lord shall bring upon her. And they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. So the evil that's going to be brought upon America is going to come from these guys up here. The North country, the Russians, and all of these allies, because Turkey is going to be allied with the Russia in this war as well. Iran, Iraq, Syria, China, North Korea, Ethiopia, Libya, and then America's allies are going to turn their weapons against America in this war. But all of these nations, the kings of the East, they're all going to come up into this place here. The war's going to start here as a conventional war. It's going to escalate to a nuclear war. Nukes are going to be fired in here. Then the nukes are going to be fired from the North Country all the way to the Americas. Iran is going to fire its nukes on them. China is going to fire its nukes on America. All the countries that have nuclear weapons are going to turn their nuclear weapons on America. Even its own allies. NATO allies are going to burn it with fire. Revelation 17, right? So we know that's coming. So anyway, I say again, thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise up from the evil that I will bring upon it her. And they shall be weary. Thus are the words of Jeremiah. Simple. So on that note, I'm going to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahawashai, Bahasham, Rakar Kadash. We're short and sweet today, family. I pray that you are edified by today's edification, and the sixth angel shall pour out his vial upon that great river, the Euphrates, one of the signs. And we're seeing it right there in front of our eyes. The river Euphrates is literally dried up completely. So let's see where we go from there. I remember the MOTB has got to come before that war comes. The MOTB has got to come before the war comes, family, just so you understand. So, shalawam, 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 to meet again, family. Keep safe. All praises and glory to Yahweh, by Shemi Shai, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. All praises, family. Shalawam. <laughs>